boys and girls, and welcome to the concession stand here on the KB Radio Network. I am your host, Kevin Reed, and welcome to the review of The Boys Season 4, Episode 7, The Insider, which is the penultimate episode of this season. We have one episode remaining, and traditionally, the penultimate episode sets up the epic season finale of the season where all of our questions are kind of uh, filtered or bottlenecked into one episode. Not not necessarily answering the questions, but setting you up for the answers, whether you like them or not. <laughs> but uh, this is the episode of every series, at least supposedly, where we get all of the setup for an season finale and the boys did an excellent job with the insider episode seven when we last left off in episode six victoria newman had this rousing speech to the whoever the top one percent of the one percent and we had the tech nine reveal of the well there was a lot of reveals with tech nine (laughs) in the previous episode but the reveal of uh his involvement in this coup we had frenchy still in prison um he turned himself in for the crimes he committed in the past he's refusing to see kimiko uh and then the big the big daddy of them all was the butcher reveal even though a lot of people knew that uh jeffrey dean Morgan's character was a figment of his imagination. It was how it was revealed that was so shocking and exciting to watch. And so you had all that going on. And also the uh, revelation that the V virus that, uh, I keep forgetting the guy's name, the one that Butcher has locked up with the one leg, um, he says the only a compound that would be strong enough to kill Homelander would trigger a global pandemic, killing all of the soups, all of them. Uh, not just the seven, but uh, Starlight, uh, Kimiko, uh, and God knows who else, and Ryan as well. So now, now Butcher is in a moral dilemma. And this is where we left off in episode six. So episode seven, D Insider, what 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 is it that we can expect in this episode well just like we expected in the previous six episodes as well as the previous four seasons or three seasons i should say pure greatness this show does not disappoint and this episode did not disappoint the episode begins on a set of a christmas special with puppets and <laughs> with uh in their puppet versions of of the seven and it starts off with a um uh a train version of a puppet and he's talking to ryan this is a show with ryan you know one of uh <laughs> one of their ways to try to put ryan out there to the public and you have the a train puppet talking to ryan about antifa <laughs> you know before singing a song that tells the audience to report it you know, report them to their parents, you know. So Ryan stops the show. He calls cut, you know, and questions the show's morals, you know, before the director tells him that the lyrics were approved by his father, who we all know is Homelander. And so this this is the first step in Ryan's, uh, I guess you could say, turn. Because we last we saw Ryan was a couple of episodes ago when – He just demoralized that director, not the director of this uh, Christmas special, but the other director who was a creeper and had the uh, personal assistant slap him and, you know, belittle him and all this here. And Ryan enjoyed that. You know, he was becoming a younger version of Homelander. So at that point, I was like, okay, so this is where we're going. So (laughs) Ryan is going to be another version of Homelander. But I guess as time went on, you know, a couple of days or so, the good in him is starting to come out. You know, he, he's still a good person because of his mother, Becca. And so he, he still has good in him. 
And later on in the episode, we see that uh, Butcher had sent him a Christmas present, which was a picture of his mother and him along with the dog, too. But uh, it kind of it kind of uh, got to Ryan at this point. And so we move on to a meeting that's happening at Vault Tower where we see Firecracker and Homelander already there. They're talking with Ashley about, uh, I don't know, stocks or something. I forgot what they were talking about. And then Sister Sage enters. And she's like, wait, uh, I thought the meeting was for 11. You know? <laughs> and and they all just turn and look at her. Homelander kicks out uh, Ashley. And that's when uh, they start the tag team on Sister Sage, they being Homelander and Firecracker. And Homelander... Uh, reveals that he had one of Butcher's bugs that was planted at Tech Knight's mansion and he believes that uh Cameron Coleman's death was for nothing. Because Homelander, let's not forget, Homelander believed that Cameron Coleman was the mole. You know, uh that uh Sister Sage had was accurate, you know, he, he didn't believe that she would lie to him and whatnot. And so Firecracker tells uh, uh, Sage that they already losing support, you know, involving this 25th Amendment. So uh, Homelander informs Sage that Firecracker will be taking her place. Uh, and we know in last episode, uh, just to recap that again, that uh, Firecracker is now nursing um lander because firecracker has taken those hormones or whatever so she can produce milk for homeland and so there's that and so that she made her power play made her move and she got to that position amongst other positions that she's in for home <laughs> but during this meeting a train wasn't in this meeting but we saw a train eavesdropping on that meeting Another member of the seven, the D, who has some issues of his own. You know, he's kind of in a love triangle now. <laughs> well, he ain't kind of in one. He's in one. Uh, he's falling in love with Sage, but he's still in a relationship with the octopus. Uh, Ambrosia, I believe. And I didn't know until this episode that the voice of Ambrosia, the uh, octopus, it's Tilda Swinton, and I did not know that. And I was like, how did they get her on this show to provide the voice <laughs> to an octopus that's in a romantic relationship with this dude? It is mind-boggling, but I love it. I love it. Uh, I love her voice performance. Her voice, uh, voiceover performance is excellent here. Uh, you know, they are having an intimate moment, laying in the bed together, and suddenly the deep gets a text and it's from Sage and Sage basically sent him a booty call text and he was out of there. He was up and out. Of <laughs> he was because he has, he's starting to fall in love with Sage and leaving poor Ambrosia to waddle in her tank. And I, I, I started at this moment, I started feeling bad for the octopus and it gets worse later on. I'm really, I mean, well, I'll, I'll talk about it when I get to it. And so uh, we move on to Annie. Annie's on the phone with her mother, telling her mother that she needs to leave town, go hide out with family in uh, Arizona somewhere. Uh, it's not safe for her. And then the mother, you know, is berating her for the abortion thing, you know, because she got kicked out of Bible school or Bible group or whatever because she's the mother of a, a a girl who had an abortion and all this other foolishness. It, it, it was just, you know, they going down that road. But uh, what I loved about this scene, after she got off the phone with her mother, you know, she, she explains to Huey, you know, why she got the abortion. And from her perspective, it made sense. Uh, you know, <laughs> rather, rather you agree with it or not, you know, I know, the abortion issue is a very, very sensitive subject. But I'm just saying, uh, what she was saying makes sense. For the story, for that particular character, you know, she does, She didn't want to bring a child into a world that was about to end. 
And in the world of the boys, she's right. You know, why? Because the world is literally about the end. And so it made no sense. But, but we see right before that conversation, we see that Huey had saved her Starlight uh, super suit. And Starlight was moved on from that. She didn't want the suit and all this here. But Huey kept the suit. You know, uh, he, he he kept the suit because that's a part of her. That's That's where... I guess that's a part of her that he fell in love with and he wanted to keep it, you know. So, but she is very upset by it, you know, and because that's a part of her life she wants to move on from. And so Huey, he takes the suit, he throws it away, and uh, that's when they have their conversation. And so we moving on to A-Train. A-Train apparently has followed Sage, and Sage is handing over a file to this unknown person on the street, this this uh, uh, assassin or something, whoever it is, and uh, A Train is taking pictures of it and he sends it to Mother's Milk, and so Mother's Milk tells the boys about the photos and Butcher enters the office, and he reveals that, you know, he basically tells them everything with the exception of his visions. He doesn't tell them about him speaking to Becca. Or to uh oh god, what's his name? Kessler. And so he, he doesn't he doesn't reveal that, but he does tell him that he has the scientists uh locked up, uh working on the virus, uh that he cut off his leg and all this here, and what the virus would do. So this upsets uh Chemico and Starlight, of course, but he tells him like no, he's not gonna do it. All the while you have Kessler telling him in his ear, you know, that devil on his shoulder, you know, uh, you're messing up. Don't do this and all this here. I really like Jeffrey Dean Stanton, not Stanton, Jeffrey Dean Morgan in this role. Uh, I'm a huge fan of his anyway, but I love him in this role, especially now that we got this revealed and he can turn devilish. Uh, he's really leaning into it, and I'm loving it. I am absolutely loving it, how he's taking Butcher on his mind trip. You know, because he instilled in the back of his head, <laughs> you know, lack of a better term, Butcher knows that this is part of his personality. Or is it? Is it part of his personality? But he is led to believe that that is part of his personality. So whatever Kessler is saying, is has got to be some truth to it because that is part of who he is. And so there's that dilemma that uh, Butcher is facing uh, currently uh, involving Kessler and this tumor that is uh, triggering triggering his visions. Uh, it was all good when it was Becca because Becca was telling him right. Now you have another element in here that is telling him everything wrong. But everything that Kessler is telling him makes sense. You know, that, that Butcher would do. You know, he would. Uh, uh, uh unleash this virus to kill soups, you know, in the past. He would uh, be merciless to Samir. Yeah, that's his name, Samir, the, the scientist. Uh, merciless to Samir. He, he, would be, he would be these things. So it's a level of truth to all of this. Uh, but uh, I digress. We move on in the episode, and Mother's Milk is giving his ex-wife uh, $10,000 in tic tickets to Belize, you know, telling them that they need to go go somewhere and be safe. You don't have to go there forever. You don't have to be there forever, but just until things settle down. Because in his mind, he believes that uh, all hell is about to break loose. He's probably not going to make it out of here alive, uh, if anybody makes it out of alive. But he wants to protect them. And uh, that was a very good scene because him and his ex-wife, they kissed, they embraced, and... You know, she confesses to him that, you know, I know that you would do anything to protect us. That's how I know this is serious. You know, <laughs> otherwise I'll be like, well, look, you, you're talking crazy or whatever. But she knows he's serious because he would not joke around with this. He wouldn't play around with this. And she wants him to come along with her, with them rather, and be a family again. And that's all Mother Milk. Well, not all that he wants, but that's high on his priority list, you know, to have his family back. And he finally gets that opportunity now 
but he still is burdened by that responsibility to try to attempt to save the world, you know, but ultimately he does decide to go with his family. Meanwhile, we have a train. He goes to see Ashley. Ashley is drunk. Uh, she's, <laughs> you know, depressed watching the news and they're talking about Coleman, uh, uh, dying of a brain amorism and all this here that everybody knows is a lie. He probably got his brains beat out of his head by the seven, uh, but <laughs> that's neither here nor there. And so Ashley is trying to convince uh, a train to flee the country with her, you know, knowing their time is limited. They know that this once Homelander finds out who is the real leak, they're, they're both going to die. They, they, they're going to die. And so uh, she's trying to get away, and uh, A-Train A Train is not having it at this particular moment. Moving on to Butcher and uh, who was it? It was Butcher, it was Starlight, and Huey, I believe. They go to find this uh, uh, unknown person that was meeting up with Sage earlier. They go to investigate that. So they go to the uh, apartment. They find... <laughs> They find this woman who looked like they were battered and bruised up and all this here. And well, well before they find the woman, Huey he had, he had found a folder that de that has detailed plans about the plot to assassinate the president on January the sixth. Wink, wink. <laughs> and so uh, we know it's Christmas time on the show, so it the time is running running down. But of course, Sister Sage gave him this folder knowing that the boys would find them. And so she knows all of this. So I, all this is a plant. But I, I found it funny that it was <laughs> that they, that they <laughs> going to schedule this assassination on January the 6th. And if you don't know what January the 6th is, get crawl from under that rock, people. Uh, but anyways, they find this woman who appears to be beat up and abused, and they attempt to help this woman and come to find out uh she isn't who she appears to be. She attacks Huey and uh, 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 Starlight, as well as Butcher, runs out of the apartment. She grabs this elderly woman on the way out and continues to run. And you're like, why did she grab that woman? You know, uh, but <laughs> and she stole some clothes, but you're like, she grabbed her and they kind of focused on the grab. And as they're running down these stairs, Huey slips on his blood. And at this point, you're like, we're halfway through this episode and we haven't received a disgusting scene, you know, <laughs> it's a gory scene in the boys yet. And normally every episode, there's something. And here it was. <laughs> he slips on the blood. And as they run it down the stairs, they show the woman and she's ripping off her skin as she's running. And you're like, man, what is, what is happening right now? <laughs> what is happening right now? And it comes to find out that uh, that is a shape shifter. And when they finish their form, the new form, it's of that elderly woman that she touched in the building. And so that's how they transferred, uh, 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 you know, their look. It is 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 a weird transition, as we saw, you know, in other movies before where people just morph into different characters or people. Not this go around. This this was a very disgusting and kind of a realistic way uh, to shape shift. It just, I, I didn't need to see it, but it, it was cool. And so we get another scene with A-Train and Mother's Milk. And Mother's Milk is packing to go leave with his family to Belize. And A-Train basically... Uh, turns a new leaf, you know. He confesses to uh, Mother's Milk that, you know, you, you know. First and foremost, you go on to Belize. You think Vault and Homelander can't get to Belize? You know, you think you're gonna be safe there? Uh, how long you think you're gonna be safe there? And he tells him about the little boy from the last episode when he saved Mother's Milk at the hospital, and the boy looks at him and smiles. And that gave him such a joy. 
and he felt like it felt like an actual hero you know it, it it changed him it really changed him so uh frenchie and chemical are back at the lab with samir samir uh tricks them stabs chemical in the leg with the virus and hobbles off <laughs> one leg and hobbles off and the virus is spreading up chemicals leg and so in an act of desperation uh frenchy cuts off chemicals leg now we know that she can grow it back so it wasn't a big deal but if it continued to grow throughout her body it would have killed her and so he saws off her leg and we got to see every single frame of it <laughs> It was like watching, uh, what was it, 27 Hours Later or whatever that movie was with Jane Franco. Oh, like, oh my God, that's disgusting. And so he yeah, <laughs> cut off the leg, and she couldn't talk. She couldn't speak. I also skipped over a scene when uh, Kimiko and uh, Frenchie were talking, and, you know, uh, she's voicing. Well, not voicing. Um, that's a bad uh, description, but <laughs> she is. She is uh, uh, expressing her dismay to Frenchie at, you know, what he did, you know, not only uh, locking himself up, but refusing to speak to her. But we get the reveal of why Kimiko can't speak in this episode. And so uh, she explains that she lost her voice after she murdered another girl during her first night at the Shining Light Camp without making a sound. And at that moment, she lost her voice. And so Kimiko confessed that she hates herself and what she had become. And Frenchie was uh, questioning this. He was like, no, you shouldn't hate yourself. You had no choice. And she flips it on him. And like, that's the same thing I'm trying to tell you about beating yourself up over what you did in the past. So I thought that was a nice little scene. But anyway, with that leg that was cut off, uh, now they have the virus. And so we have that. And, and, and then we get the scene that tore me up. I, I'm not going to lie. I never thought in a million years that I would cry in a boy's episode. I went through four seasons and never cried. I was excited. I probably had tears of joy. But I actually got emotional in this scene. And it was over an octopus, man. It, it was heartbreaking. <laughs> I don't know why, but it was heartbreaking. And so Ambrosia reveals to the deep that she know that she she knew all this time that she uh, uh, that the deep was having a sexual relationship with Sister Sage. And so the two get into this argument, and uh, Ambrosia is telling Deep like, "Look, you're being used by Sage. She doesn't love you. She doesn't want you. She's using." And so uh, this is upsetting him. She continues to tell him this. He gets so mad that he breaks her fish tank and locks her in the closet. And you have to listen to her cry for help behind this door as she suffocates to death. You know, she can't breathe. There's no water. And it was just so heartbreaking that he did this, you know, because he, he did love her until Sage came along. And I, I'm, I'm talking like this is the one. <laughs> This is an octopus. <laughs> but it was hard. I'm telling you, man. Now, uh, after this happened, uh, uh, the deep, he pledged his full allegiance to the homeland. He was like, well, I'll do anything. I'll kill all the fish in the sea for you if you want. And so he sends, uh, uh, he being a homelander, sends the deep and uh, uh, black noir off to kill Butcher and the boy. So we get a nice battle between the boys and the deep and black noir. I mean, it was nice. It, it was it was one of those subtle scenes, you know. It wasn't big Avenger style action superhero fight action like that, but it was nice action contained into this office building or this off just one office, and they're going at it and. I'm sitting here like, man, how are we going to get through this? How is Butcher and uh, Starlight going to get through this? Because let's not forget, Starlight hasn't gained uh, uh, control of her powers yet. She hadn't got her powers back. She's still struggling 
with that. So she can't defend herself. Butcher is butcher. <laughs> so uh, there's that. And I'm like, well, and they're, they're going to die because the deep and black noir, they, they're beasts, man. They're supers. And just then as they're uh, uh, about to, I guess, put the final kill shot on these two, a train shows up and saves the day. A train. Uh, I mean, he's fully in it now. It, it's like, he's not hiding it no more. He's going to be the hero that he, uh, wants to be. And he saves butcher and Annie at this moment. And, uh, manages to, uh, allow butcher and Annie to get the upper hand on those two. Uh, it was a funny scene there when black noir started talking. And Annie was like, wait, you talk? Because she, she knows the old black noir who didn't speak. But this black noir does and flies. And he started to fly. And so that freaked him out too. But it, it, that was nice. And so now, knowing this, A-Train, he runs, he rushes to uh, uh, Ashley's office, tells her that the deep and noir know about him. They know that he's the leak now. And now he won't, now he wants to run away <laughs> now he's ready for her to uh, uh go to uh, italy or wherever she said but she at this point now she has changed her mind and she reminds him that he has a tracking chip so make sure you take your tracking chip out before you leave you know otherwise homelander will find you so that's where we end that uh mother's milk and butcher or at a bar after the fight and annie is approached by this woman who wants to take a selfie with her, you know, and you know, you know, the selfie yeah, when they hug each other and takes the selfie, nothing of it. Didn't think nothing of it. Didn't think nothing of it, it's, <laughs> but it was what it was. She also asked butcher about who Kaiser is. Then I'm talking about Andy. She asked butcher who Kaiser is, you know, cause she heard him speak his name during the attack in the office. Cause butcher had asked, okay, Ky all right, Kaiser, uh, uh, oh, Kessler, Kaisler, Kessler, uh, 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 protect us, do what you did to, uh, kill the other suit that time, you know, but he doesn't show up. And so, uh, Mother's Milk calls his ex-wife and tells her that he can't go with her to Belize. Uh, he also showed up and saved the day too with a machine gun, uh, in that office fight. But anyways, uh, and he tells her that he can't go. And so we go back to Vault, and we see Firecracker attempts to conf uh, uh, comfort Homelander after he been informed that A-Train is the actual leak. And he's crushed by this because he's like, man, I thought, how could he lie to me? How could he do this to me? And Sister Sage walks in, and when she walks in, she confessed that she knew about A-Train being the leak. She knew that. <laughs> and she knew all the whole time. Uh, but that it was all part of her master plan. Uh, everything that A-Train was telling the boys was part of her plan. She strategically told uh, certain things so he can bring it back to them. You know, misdirection, if you will. And so Homelander wasn't hearing it. He didn't care. He fires Sister Sage from the 7 and sends her back to Detroit. And so as she leaves, and this is a funny scene, also heartbreaking in a way, too. As she's leaving... The deep and the war, they're walking up the hallway. They're beaten up, battered, and bruised up from the fight. And uh, she informs him that she's been fired. And she continues to walk off. And it's then is revealed that not only has Sage been sleeping with the deep, but she's been sleeping with Noir. And <laughs> what made it heartbreaking was the fact that the deep he turned to black noir he was like oh you you shove a uh, a probe in her brain too to sleep with her and he's like no because noir he loved it. he he said how can you do this how can you leave i love you i'm in love with you and he he was like yeah so you shove the thing in her brain he was like i don't shove nothing in her brain and sage just looks at the, they look at each other and he was like oh man <laughs> Because it, it, it dawned on him that Ambrosia was right. <laughs> she was right. And he killed her for nothing. And I was like, man, that is messed up. 
So it's going to be interesting to see uh, how this plan continue to play out because uh, the plan, the, the wheels are turning here. The, the, it's in motion. Uh, whatever Sister Sage's plan was is in motion. And there's no stopping it. I, I wouldn't doubt it if she knew this was going to happen. And so she's always, she's seven steps ahead of us. She isn't two steps ahead of everybody. She's like seven steps ahead of everybody else. And so uh, that's that. Now, uh, towards the end of this episode, we get, uh, we go back to that Christmas special with Ryan. Uh, there, the puppets are singing and all this other good stuff. And he stops production. Now, this is a live broadcast. So everybody's watching this. So he stops it and he calls out Vault. And they were going to cut the feed, but he, he demanded them, don't cut the feed. I got, you know, I got something to say, you know, and he, he, he says on live television that kids should trust their family, you know, before talking uh, about his mother, you know, Becca, and revealing to the world that she was married to Butcher, not Homelander. And Butcher proudly watched the broadcast. He was still at the bar, and uh, it, it, it was a cool little moment that uh, Ryan did this. It's cool now. <laughs> <laughs> but we know Homelander is not going to like that. But uh, that wasn't the big twist of this episode. We get to the final scene of this episode. Well, one of the, yeah, I think this was the final scene. Um, Annie, she surprised Huey with uh, 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 a little, I guess you could say a little soiree. When she puts on the starlight costume and the two uh, start to have intercourse and they have sex and then uh, uh, Huey goes to sleep and we see Annie get up out the bed and then we get the reveal. This isn't Annie. It's the shapeshifter from earlier. And I was like, wait, where did this come from? <laughs> you know? I'm like, how did this happen? What 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 is going on? And then it dawned on me, with the help of the show, of course, because we get the flashbacks and we see that uh, she leaves the uh, apartment with Lou, uh, Huey's laptop and everything. Um, but the real um, Annie, she's chained up in this location. Nobody knows that. You don't know where she is. Uh, but the woman who took the selfie with her is the one who is the shapeshifter. That's how she was able to copy Annie. And, and so she later kidnapped her at the bar. And so that that's how the episode ends with kind of a, a another little cliffhanger where we hear a noise wherever Annie is at. And she hears the noise and she turns and looks at it and the episode goes black. This was one of the best episodes of the season. And I loved it for its setup. Uh, as you could tell, this is different. I didn't do this uh, review like I've done any other review this season for the boys uh, because this episode set up so much. And unlike other shows that I'm re currently reviewing here on the KB Radio Network, uh, this one knows how to set up a finale. Uh, well, I might as well say it. I, I'm picking on it, but it is what it is. Uh, the Acolyte. The Acolyte just had their penultimate episode before the season finale. And it did nothing to help that show. It did nothing to help the finale. It's actually raised more questions than answers. Here, it didn't raise more questions per se. It just set up some really good answers to come. You know, how we come to these answers uh, how we come um, with Sister Sage. What, what, what's the results of that? What's the results of uh, A-Train um, when Homelander meets up with him? Because <laughs> eventually Homelander is going to catch him. Uh, Homelander uh, dealing with Ryan. What is going to happen there with Ryan making this confession on live TV? You know, uh, with this shapeshifter being in play here to kill the president. You know, because there's nothing you can do. How are you going to stop somebody that you don't know what they look like? <laughs> you know, or you don't know where they at, who they are. Uh, it can pop up anywhere. Uh, that's that's it's no way. 
<laughs> you know, but that's going to be interesting. Um, Chemical and Frenchie, their relationship. Where are we going with that? Uh, there's a lot going on, but it's going to be a fun ride next week. I cannot wait for next week. It's it's going to be a barn burner of an episode. I got all the faith in the world uh, for it. Uh, so far, I haven't been disappointed by the boys, and I seriously doubt that we get it next week. And I certainly wasn't disappointed this week. I truly enjoyed Episode 7, The Insider from the boys i would like to know what did you think of this episode did you enjoy it are you excited for the season finale are you sad uh that next season will be the final season season five will be it for the boys uh and i'm hurt by that man i am so hurt but at the same time as this season goes on as as exciting as it is as well written directed acted and everything else this show is it's starting it's getting to that point where where else can you go with it so they're leaving at the right time i believe but uh before all that happens we still have next week's episode i would like to know your thoughts email the show kb radio podcast at gmail.com you can also search for this show on all social media platforms just search for the kb radio network also everybody don't forget about youtube subscribe to the kb radio network channel and like this video if you don't mind. Also, don't forget about the five stars, the reviews, and sharing this show. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, wherever you are currently listening to the concession stand here on the KB Radio Network. Everybody, thank you for joining me for this review of The Boys Season 4, Episode 7, The Insider. Can't wait to speak to you next week for our season finale of the boys oh man i can't wait I want you all to know that i love you continue to love everyone and until we speak again you all be blessed